I hope I don't get tipsy before I can tell the story. <laughs> I'm feeling real, real housewives of a night. Can you fetch me something? I'm feeling super cute today. My baby, let me do my makeup. Oh. Ooh. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Silver Lines Beauty Playbook. So today's video is going to be, I guess, a story time video. Because this is a requested video. A lot of you guys have been asking me about my labor and delivery story. Shout out to mamas out there, especially single mothers. We are doing the damn thing. This is not easy. Postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety is real, okay? I just wanted to start off with that. Men, baby daddies, husbands, boyfriends, lovers, partners, be very sensitive to your booze because it's real, it's real. <laughs> anyway, so today's video is going to be my labor and delivery story. <sighs> I was reluctant because there's some TMI and I don't know that there's any way to tell the story without TMI. We're gonna need this one because I'm gonna keep it simple, keep it raw, and try to keep it cute. <laughs> I'm going to start my labor and delivery story at 28 weeks pregnant. At 28 weeks pregnant, I was going in for my regular checkup. It was one of those late in the afternoon checkups. So they do um, urine, they'll take a urine sample, they'll check your vitals, your numbers and as long as everything's okay you're good for those that don't know i was diagnosed with high blood pressure roughly maybe three three years three or four years ago immediately when i found out that i got pregnant my blood pressure medication was changed in order to suit my pregnancy and something that i did notice every time i went in for my checkups my numbers were getting a little bit higher every time and so they would just adjust the medication so that day, I was expecting pretty much the same thing. The nurse comes in, she takes it, she's like, oh, you're a little bit on the high side. And that didn't startle me because pregnancy one can raise your blood pressure. When my doctor came in and she was just like, oh, um, question for you, how long have you, has your blood pressure been like this? Have you been checking it? And I said, yeah, I check it maybe once a day or every other day. She's like, so how long has it been like this? I said, um, it's been high since the beginning of the pregnancy. I don't know if you noticed. And she was like, yeah, but today it's just particularly higher. And I was like, okay, well, what's the problem? Well, she was like, well, how do you feel? I feel pregnant. And she was just like, well, besides that, you have any headaches, any blurry visions, blah, 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 blah. I was like, nope, 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 nope. You know, and she was just like, well, I'm not comfortable with these numbers. I need you to go over to the main hospital to um, get evaluated there. <sighs> Every time I went to the hospital, I felt like I would be feeling so good that day but by the time I stepped foot in the hospital, I would feel like I was literally on the verge of death. They talked to me in such a way that I felt like it just promoted anxiety. You could be feeling so good. By the time you get out of there, you're like, well, should I buy a coffin now or should I just buy the land? The main hospital was actually like a five minute walk. So even in my pregnancy, I just walked over. I get there. So they check me in, they hook me up to some machines, they do my numbers and they're like, yeah, we need to stabilize your blood pressure. I said, okay, go ahead and do that. And she's like, yeah, you need to stay overnight. I was like, um, no, I'm not staying overnight. I was like, you know what? Dad, of you guys making me feel sick, you're stressing me out, I'm leaving. On the drive home, now I'm stressed. Well, I develop this headache. Once I get home, I eat. I take a, a Tylenol to go to bed and I go to bed. Uh, that probably was around like 10 or 11 o'clock. By 2 a.m., I wake up to this really banging headache. Ugh, I try to get up to go pee. By the time I made it to the bathroom, I was throwing up, which I was just like, ugh. Here we go. They've stressed me into a throw obsession. I called my cousin. What do you think I should do? He's like, um, I can come pick you up now. If you think you can make it to the morning, just wait till the morning and then we'll, we'll go in the morning. So I get up, I go with my cousin. I get there. I know at least at this point that I'm getting um, I'm getting admitted. So they admit me to the hospital. Basically, I ended up being at the hospital for five days. I have never been admitted to a hospital. I did not know that a hospital is a place that you do not get rest. But every single day, 
somebody was in and out of my room between the cleaners, the nurse, the cardiologist, the OBGYN, the regular doctor, ultrasound lady. There were just so many people in and out of my room. I got zero rest. The last evening I spent at the hospital was the most eventful because by that point, I was falling into a slight depression. I hated being in the hospital. I hated not getting any sleep. And I knew that I wasn't ever going to get sleep there. In fact, they were trying to keep me at the hospital for the rest of my pregnancy. So they were trying to keep me from 28 weeks to 39 weeks. One, I can't afford that. Two, I'm not staying in this place because within five days I was already depressed. So I told the doctor, I said, you're gonna have to work some kind of magic so I can leave because I'm not staying here. Mm -mm, not bro. Fourth night that I was there, I begged them to please give me a couple, like at least five hours straight with nobody coming into my room. And they couldn't even grant that request. I was so sleep deprived. I told them that I wasn't going to take any more medication if they didn't leave me alone. And by the fifth morning, I packed up my bags and I signed myself out of the hospital. The one thing that I found very disturbing with our healthcare system is the fact that they only believe in the power of medicine. They don't believe in the power of rest, mental health, physically um, being able to change your situation. They only believe in science and medicine. And that was a turnoff for me. Me and my doctor did not see eye to eye because of that. That was ending of September. What I got from that whole situation was that I could not go back to work because my blood pressure literally would spike while I was sleeping. I ended up being diagnosed with preeclampsia and i knew that the only way that i would make it through to the to closest to the end of my pregnancy with my baby born alive was to not go to work because i work in a stressful environment so i was home all of october my original due date was december 9th i did weekly hospital visits um where I, they would check on me, check on the baby, and make sure the baby was good, and I'd go back home and do it again. And so I made it to 34 weeks. Up until then, I was able to manage my blood pressure numbers by changing up my diet. I was drinking plenty of water, physical activity by cleaning up around the house, and I was taking my medication. That worked for me from 28 weeks up until about 34 weeks. My goal was to try to get to 37 weeks to where I was at least closest to full term as possible. So I remember going in that morning for my, my clinic checkup and they checked my blood pressure three times. And by the third time, it was still high. And when I got to see the doctor, the doctor was like, we are going to induce you today. You need to have this baby now. Even though when they checked the ultrasound, the baby was fine. They were concerned that I couldn't you know, carry anymore, which made me really sad because at 34 weeks, my baby would be in the NICU. So he gives me this paperwork and he's like, go to the main hospital and check yourself in. You're getting new today. I remember leaving and I got to my car and I started crying. And I was just like, on top of just being stressed generally with the pregnancy, I was worried a lot about my finances because I had not planned to be out of work this long. I just, I just felt so broken. And the only other thing at that point was, let me just go home and get something to eat at least. And I went home, I made a plate and I sat there and I just kept thinking like, what do I do? And out of nowhere, I just listened to my body. I got done eating, the itis kicked in and I was like, I need a nap. <laughs> And I checked my numbers when I got when I woke up and the numbers were fine. So I told myself that I would watch my numbers personally because I sort of kind of believed that the reason why my blood pressure was high at the clinic was because the clinic gives me anxiety. So whenever I went in or a day before I knew I had to go in, my blood pressure would spike. And then when I would get home, my blood pressure would be fine. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stay home for the rest of my pregnancy. And I did. My plan was to stay home till 37 weeks. That was my plan. 
So I get through the first week at home. I got through halfway through the second week. And I remember that morning I woke up and I don't know, what morning was that? It was November 9th and I felt awful. Like my body was like, what are we doing? I cannot carry you and this baby no more. I was dragging. I felt weak. I felt sick. I just felt my body giving up that morning. I don't know that I'm going to make it. I called my neighbor. I asked her if she would take me to the hospital that day. And she was like, okay, cool. So around 5 p.m., she came and got me. I got there and the nurses were like, oh, Mrs. Okoro, you were due in here two, two or three weeks ago. And I said, yeah, I know. Well, where have you been? I said, I've been at home. I said, I just didn't feel good today, so I decided to come in. So they rushed me in. They checked my vitals. Of course, my blood pressure is high. Um, that day, my blood pressure was high. It wouldn't go down. They hooked me up to this machine. And it's horrible. They hook you up to like so many different machines. The blood pressure cuff on one hand, IV in one hand. Then both my legs were attached to this uh, machine that inflates and deflates in order to promote circulation around your feet because my feet were swollen. So it's like a... Bro. You know, I just actually surrendered to the process at that point because I was like, I'm... I'm done. The ultrasound lady comes in and she comes to check me out. And I'm bummed out because I really wanted to make it to 37 weeks. And the reality was my baby was going to have to end up in the NICU. So the ultrasound lady comes in and she's doing the ultrasound. And then she magically says, she says, you're 36 weeks and six days. And I was like, 36 weeks and six days? I thought I was 35 weeks and six days. She was like, no, you're showing 36 weeks and six days. Are you telling me right now that I'm actually one day away from 37 weeks? I did it. I, I literally did it. So after that, the doctor came in and she's like, yeah, we're definitely going to get you induced today. And I was like, that's fine because I'm 36 and 6, so I'm good. They started it off. I can't remember. Is it Pitocin? I think it was Pitocin. Whatever it was, it was supposed to soften up my cervix. So they started with that. So I took that. It was like a a tablet that was almost like a cotton melt type of tablet. So you put it between your cheek and your gum and it's supposed to dissolve there for some odd reason. And they gave me four of those over like a period of like, I want to say it was like every eight hours they came with the Pitocin. So that took me into um, the next day. At this point, I think I just felt more anxiety because you want the baby out of you, but you're not ready for the baby to come out of you. So right about November 10th evening, around 7 or 8 p.m., the lady comes in and she says, okay, now we're going to give you oxytocin. So oxytocin is what induces labor. Like now we're, we're getting the body to start with the contractions and stuff. And, you know, this is, this is it. This is the big one. This is <laughs> I remember just trying to keep it together because I'm just like, I know I have to do this. But I just hope this goes really, really well. My friend who was supposed to be with me didn't make it because I ended up being at the hospital um, days earlier than expected. So I had texted another friend of mine, Laurel. She wasn't part of my initial birthing plan, but she was more than willing to come and be there for me. I... I was probably just going to go through it alone, but she didn't want me to do that, which I thank goodness that she came because you don't want to go through that without somebody right next to you. Around 8 p.m., they start the oxytocin, and it's like in drip form, so they, they, they put it through the IV. And I remember when the nurse was doing it, I asked her, I was like, um, so um, how long does this take? I said, do I have to finish the whole bag? She said, yes. So I was like, oh, when I looked at it, I was like, okay, that bag... The way it looks, it's going to take another day. So um, so I said, oh, well, so I can get some rest. She said, yeah, you can you can sleep while you're doing, getting induced. I said, oh, not nice. Then I asked her, I said, what is contractions supposed to feel like? They kind of feel like period cramps. And I was like, oh, period cramps. I can do that. I've had cramps before. They hook up the bag and I go to sleep. Sometime around 10 or 11 o'clock. I remember just waking up with a force. <laughs> Here comes TMI. Oh.